The Belarusian resistance during World War II opposed Nazi Germany from 1941 until 1944. Belarus was one of the Soviet republics occupied during Operation Barbarossa. Belarusian partisans may refer to Soviet-formed irregular military groups participating in the Belarusian resistance during World War II against Nazi Germany as well as the pro-German collaborationist structures behind the Soviet front. Topic. Pro-Soviet resistance After the victories of the Wehrmacht against the Red Army in 1941, Belarus was one of the Soviet republics that came under control of Nazi Germany Operation Barbarossa. The official government of the occupation forces was established on August 23, 1941, under the direction of Wilhelm Kube, the German administrator of the General Bezirk Wiruthenian district. The German pacification operations were able to curb partisan activity significantly throughout the summer and fall of 1941. The Belarusian Auxiliary Police was established by the Nazis in July 1941 and deployed to murder operations particularly in February to March 1942. The resistance movement first consisted of cut-off Soviet soldiers, some civilians began joining them around the summer of 1942. From that time until the end of the year, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Bolsheviks of Byelorussia formed courses and offices helping those wishing to fight the Nazi government. General Reichskommissar Wilhelm Kube. The first partisan detachments were composed mostly of Red Army personnel, but also included local people. They were commanded by offices of the Red Army, the Soviet secret police NKVD or local Soviet or communist apparatchiks. These detachments dated back to the early days of World War II, the detachment Starosolsky of Major Dorodnik in Zhabinka district June 23, 1941, the detachment of Vasily Korj in Pinsk on June 26, 1941 and others. First awards to the partisans with Order of Hero of the Soviet Union occurred on August 6, 1941. They were given to detachment commanders Pavlovsky and Bumishkov. Throughout 1941, the core of the partisan movement consisted of the straggling remains of the Red Army units destroyed in Operation Barbarossa, personnel of the destruction battalions, and local communist Komsomol and Soviet apparatchiks. The most common unit of the period was the detachment. The seed. Partisan detachments, diversionist and organizational groups were actively formed and inserted into German-occupied territories beginning in the summer of 1941. Urban underground groups were formed as a force complementing the activities of partisan units, which operated in rural terrains. Topic. Organization. As a controlling body, a network of underground communist structures was actively developed on German-occupied territories, and it received an influx of specially picked communist activists. By the end of 1941, more than 2,000 partisan detachments with more than 90,000 personnel operated in German-occupied territories. However, the activities of the partisan forces weren't centrally coordinated or logistically provided for until spring of 1942. In order to coordinate partisan operations, the headquarters of the partisan movement, headed by Pantaleman Ponomarenko, the Russian-born former head of the Belarusian Soviet Socialist Republic, was organized on May 30, 1942. The staff had its liaisons in the military councils of the fronts and armies. The territorial staffs were subsequently created, dealing with the partisan movement in the respective Soviet republics and in the occupied provinces of the Soviet Russia. Later NKVD, Smirsch and Gru began training special groups of future partisans, effectively, special forces units, in the rear and dropping them in the occupied territories. 
The candidates for these groups were chosen among volunteers from regular Red Army, NKVD's internal troops, and also among Soviet sportsmen. When dropped behind Axis lines, the groups were to organize and guide the local self-established partisan units. Radio operators and intelligence gathering officers were the essential members of each group since amateur fighters could not be trusted with these tasks. Some commanders of these special units like Dmitry Medvedev later became well-known partisan leaders. Topic: Logistics difficulties. The Soviet authorities considered Belarus to be of the utmost importance to the development of the Soviet partisan war from the very beginning. The main factors were its geography, with lots of dense forests and swamps, and its strategic position on the communications going from west to Moscow. In fact, Belarusian communist bodies in the eastern provinces of Belarus began to organize and facilitate organization of the partisan units on the day after the first directive issuing, directives No. 1 of 30 July 1941 and No. 2 of 1 July 1941. By the Soviet estimates, in August 1941 about 231 detachments were operating already. The seed units, formed and inserted into Belarus, totaled 437 by the end of the 1941, comprising more than 7.2 thousand personnel. However, as the front line moved further away, the logistical conditions steadily worsened for the partisan units, as the resources ran out, and there was no wide-scale support from over the front line until March 1942. One outstanding difficulty was the lack of radio communication, which wasn't addressed until April 1942. The support of the local people was also insufficient. So, for several months, partisan units in Belarus were virtually left to themselves. Especially difficult for the partisans was the winter of 1941-1942, with severe shortages in ammunition, medicine and supplies. The actions of partisans were generally incoordinated. In the circumstances, the German pacification operations in summer and fall 1941 were able to curb the partisan activity significantly. Many units went underground, and generally, in the late fall 1941, Early 1942, the partisan units weren't undertaking the significant military operations, limiting themselves to sorting out the organizational problems, building up the logistics support and gaining influence with the local people. By the incomplete data, in the end of the 1941, 99 partisan detachments and about 100 partisan groups operated in Belarus. In winter 1941, 1942, 50 partisan detachments and about 50 underground organization and groups operated in Belarus. By the incomplete Russian data, in the end of the 1941, 99 partisan detachments and about 100 partisan groups operated in Soviet Belarus. In winter 1941-1942, 50 partisan detachments and about 50 underground organizations and groups operated there. In the period, the 1st of December 1941, the German Guard forces in the Army Group Center rear comprised four security divisions, two SS brigades, 260 companies of different branches of service. In August 1941, about 231 partisan detachments were operating in Soviet Belarus. The units totaled 437 by the end of the 1941, comprising more than 7,200 personnel. In the period of December 1941, the German Guard forces in the Army Group Center. Rear comprised four security divisions, two SS brigades, 260 companies of different branches of service. The Moscow battle turned the tide in the morale of the partisans and of the local people in general. 
However, the real turning point in the development of the partisan movement in Belarus, and, in fact, on the German-occupied territories in general, came in the course of the Soviet Winter 1942 offensive. Topic. 1942 Weitbisk Gate The Germans treated the local population abysmally with the notable exception of the fraction of the civil administration headed by Wilhelm Cube, maintained coal causes in East and restored land possessions in West, collecting heavy food taxes, rounded up and sent young people to work in the Germany. Overwhelmingly, Jews and even small-scale Soviet activists would feel more secure in the partisan ranks. The direct boost to the partisan numbers were the Red Army POWs of the local origin, who were let out to the homes. In fall 1941, but ordered by Germans to return to the concentration camps in March 1942. In the spring 1942, the aggregation of the smaller partisan units into brigades began, prompted by the experience of the first year of war. The coordination, numerical buildup, structural rework, and now established logistical feed all translated to the greatly increased partisan units' military capability, which showed, e.g., in the increased number of diversions on the railroads, reaching hundreds of engines and thousands of cars destroyed by the end of the year. In 1942, the terror campaign against the territorial administration, which was manned by the local people, collaborators and traitors was additionally emphasized this resulted however in the definite split of the local people's sympathies resulting in the beginning of the organization of the anti-partisan units with native personnel in 1942 by the november 1942 soviet partisan units in belarus numbered about 47000 personnel the turning point in the development of the Soviet partisan movement came with the opening of the Vitsyabysk Gate in February 1942. The partisan units were included in the overall Soviet strategical developments shortly after that, and the centralized organizational and logistical support had been organized, with Gate's existence being the very important facilitating factor. See also, Central Headquarters of Partisan Movement, Special Belarusian Courses. In the spring 1942, the aggregation of the smaller partisan units into brigades began, prompted by the experience of the first year of war. The coordination, numerical buildup, structural rework and now established logistical feed all translated to the greatly increased partisan units' military capability, which showed, e.g., in the increased number of diversions on the railroads, reaching hundreds of engines and thousands of cars destroyed by the end of the year. In 1942, the terror campaign against the territorial administration, which was manned by the local people, collaborators and traitors was additionally emphasized this resulted however in the definite split of the local people's sympathies resulting in the beginning of the organization of the anti-partisan units with native personnel in 1942 by the november 1942 soviet partisan units in belarus numbered about 47.3 thousand personnel Topic. 1943 In January 1943, out of 56,000 partisan personnel, 11,000 were operating in the West Belarus, which was 3.5 less per 10,000 local people than in the East, and even more so up to 5 to 6 factor if accounting for the much more efficient evacuation measures in the East in 1941. This discrepancy wouldn't be sufficiently explained by the German treatment of local people, nor by the quick German advance in 1941, nor by the social circumstances then existing in these regions. 
there is strong evidence, that this was decision of the Central Soviet authorities, who abstained from the greater buildup of the partisan forces in West Belarus, and let Polish underground military structures to grow unopposed in these lands in 1941-1942, in the context of relations with the Polish government in exile of Sikorsky. Certain level of military cooperation, imposed by the respective commands, was noted between Soviet partisans and Armia Krajowa AK, the people of Polish nationality were, to a degree, exampled from the terror campaign in 1942. After the break of diplomatic relations between USSR and Polish government in exile in April 1943, the situation changed radically. From this moment on, AK was treated as hostile military force. The buildup of the Soviet partisan force in the western Belarus was ordered and implemented during 1943, with nine brigades, ten detachments and fifteen operational groups transferred from the eastern to western lands, effectively tripling the partisan force there to 36, 8,000 in December 1943. It is estimated that approximately equals 10 to 12,000 personnel were transferred, and about same number came from the local volunteers. The buildup of the military force was complemented by the ensuing buildup of the underground Communist Party structures and propaganda activity, the Stalingrad victory, certain curbing of the terror campaign actually since December 1942, formally in February 1943, and amnesty promised to repenting collaborants were a significant factors in the 1943 growth of the Soviet partisan forces. Desertions from the ranks of the German-controlled Hilfspolizei and military formations strengthened, with sometimes whole units coming over to Soviet partisan side. Volga Tartars Battalion, 900 personnel, February 1943, Gil Rodiano 1st Russian People's Brigade of the SS, 2,500 personnel, August 1943. Summarily, about 7,000 people of miscellaneous anti-Soviet formations joined the Soviet partisan force. About 1, 9,000 specialists and commanders were inserted in the Belarusian lands in 1943. However, the local people comprised the core of the personnel influx in the Soviet partisan force. In late May 1943, Uderzhenyau Battalion E. Kadro, with permission of the headquarters of the Home Army, concentrated its forces, 200 men, around Wiskow. The Germans soon found out about it and surrounded the Poles. A skirmish ensued, in which four Poles were killed and eight wounded. German losses were estimated at 15 killed and 22 wounded. Those who were not caught, divided themselves into two groups and headed north, to Berserk Bialystok. On June 11, 1943, the UBK forces under Major Stanislaw Pichul Radecki, of the 4th Battalion engaged the Germans near the village of Pali, Bielisk Podlaski County. 25 Poles and approximately 40 Germans died. In July 1943 the Uderzhenyau Battalion e Kadro units, active in Berserk Bialystok, consisted of five battalions. Altogether, there were 200 fighters, and during a number of skirmishes with the Germans including the 1943 Polish underground raid on East Prussia, 138 of them were killed. These heavy losses were criticized by the headquarters of the Home Army, who claimed that the UBK was profusely using lives of young Polish soldiers. On August 17, 1943, upon the order of General Tadeusz Bor Komarowski, the UBK was included into the Home Army. Soon afterwards, all battalions were transferred to the area of Nowogradic. In the fall 1943, the partisan force in BSSR totaled about 153,700, and by the end 1943 about 122,000, with about 30,800 put behind the front line in the course of liberation of eastern parts of BSSR end 1943. After the liberation of BSSR, about 180,000 partisans joined the Soviet Army in 1944. During the 
1944 period, the turnaround in the Soviet partisan force in Belarus was about 374,000, about 70,000 in urban underground, and about 400,000 in the reserve of the partisan force. Among Soviet partisans in Belarus were people of 45 different ethnic backgrounds and 4,000 foreigners including 3,000 Poles, 400 Czechs and Slovaks, 300 Yugoslavians, etc. Around 65% of Belarusian partisans were local people. On September 22, 1943, Cube was assassinated in his Minsk home by a bomb as part of Operation Blow Up. The bomb was placed by a Soviet partisan Yelena Mazanik, a Belarusian woman who had managed to find employment in Cube's household as a maid and presumably became his mistress in order to assassinate him. Topic. 1943–1944 The partisan movement was so strong that by 1943–44 there were entire regions in occupied Belarus, where Soviet authority was re-established deep inside the German-held territories. There were even partisan coal causes that were raising crops and livestock to produce food for the partisans. During the battles for liberation of Belarus, partisans were considered the Fourth Belarusian Front. As early as the spring of 1942 the Soviet partisans were able to effectively harass German troops and significantly hamper their operations in the region. The buildup of the Soviet partisan force in the West Belarus was ordered and implemented during 1943, with nine brigades, ten detachments and fifteen operational groups transferred from the eastern to western lands, effectively tripling the partisan force there to 36,000 in December 1943. It is estimated that approximately equals 10,000 to 12,000 personnel were transferred, and about same number came from the local volunteers. The buildup of the military force was complemented by the ensuing buildup of the underground Communist Party structures and propaganda activity, the Soviet victory in the Battle of Stalingrad, certain curbing of the terror campaign actually since December 1942, formally in February 1943, and amnesty promised to repenting collaborators were a significant factors in the 1943 growth of the Soviet partisan forces. Desertions from the ranks of the German-controlled police and military formations strengthened, with sometimes whole units coming over to Soviet partisan side, including the Volga Tatars Battalion 900 personnel, February 1943, and the Gil Rodionov's 1st Russian People's Brigade of the SS 2,500 personnel, August 1943. Summarily, about 7,000 people of miscellaneous anti-Soviet formations joined the Soviet partisan force, while about 1,900 specialists and commanders were inserted in the Belarusian lands in 1943. However, the local people comprised the core of the personnel influx in the Soviet partisan force. Itzhak Rudnicki was active in the Wilno Ghetto underground movement from 1942 to 1944. In February 1943, he joined the Belarusian partisans in the Wilno Battalion of the Markov Brigade, a primarily non-Jewish unit in which he had to contend with anti-Semitism. Apart from a foray infiltrating the Wilno Ghetto in April 1943 to meet with underground leader Abba Kovner, he stayed with the partisans until the end of the war, fighting the Germans and their collaborators in the Naroks forest in Belarus. In the fall 1943, the partisan force in BSSR totaled about 153,000, and by the end 1943 about 122,000, with about 30,000 put behind the front line in the course of liberation of eastern parts of BSSR end 1943. The partisan movement was so strong that by 1943-1944 there were entire regions in occupied Belarus, where Soviet authority was re-established deep inside the German-held territories. 
There were even partisan coal causes that were raising crops and livestock to produce food for the partisans. The Bielski partisans' activities were aimed at the Nazis and their collaborators, such as Belarusian volunteer policemen or local inhabitants who had betrayed or killed Jews. They also conducted sabotage missions. The Nazi regime offered a reward of 100,000 Reichsmarks for assistance in the capture of Tuvia Bielski, and in 1943, led major clearing operations against all partisan groups in the area. Some of these groups suffered major casualties, but the Bielski partisans fled safely to a more remote part of the forest, and continued to offer protection to the noncombatants among their band. During the process of reorganization of the Nowogradic area of the Armia Krajowa, the Uderzenyau Battalion Kadro units created a battalion, which became part of the 77th Infantry Regiment of the Armia Krajowa, under Bolesław Piasecki. In February 1944 the battalion had around 700 soldiers some sources put the number at around 500. The unit took part in the Operation Tempest, fighting the Germans around Lida and Wilno, see, Wilno Uprising, where it suffered heavy losses. V. Wilenska Brigada Army Krajave, commanded by Zygmunt Sengilars Lupashko, fought against the German army and SS units in the area of southern Wilno Voivodeship, but was also frequently attacked by the Soviet partisans paradropped in the area by the Red Army. In April 1944, Zygmunt Sengilars was arrested by Lithuanian police and handed over to the German Gestapo. Lupashko escaped or was released in unknown circumstances at the end of April. In reprisal actions his brigade captured several dozen German officials and sent several threatening letters to Gestapo but it remains unknown if and how these contributed to his release. On June 12, 1944 General Tadeusz Bor Komarowski, commander-in-chief of the Armia Krajowa, issued an order to prepare a plan of liberating Wilno from German hands. The Armia Krajowa districts of Vilnius and Neverudak planned to take control of the city before the Soviets could reach it. The commander of the Armia Krajowa district in Wilno, General Alexander Krizanovsky, Wilk decided to regroup all the partisan units in the northeastern part of Poland for the assault, both from inside the city and from the outside. On June 23, two squads of Wilenska Brigada, commanded by Mox and Rikosi, attacked the Lithuanian policemen in Dubiniai. The starting date was set to July 7. Approximately 12,500 Armia Krajowa soldiers attacked the German garrison and managed to seize most of the city centre. Heavy street fighting in the outskirts lasted until July 14. In Wilno's eastern suburbs, the Armia Krajowa units cooperated with reconnaissance groups of the Soviet Third Belarusian Front. Topic. Soviets enter General Krizanovsky wanted to group all of the partisan units into a re-created Polish 19th Infantry Division. However, the advancing Red Army entered the city on July 15, and the NKVD started to intern all Polish soldiers. In August the commander of all Home Army units in the Wilno area, General Aleksander Krizanovsky. Wilk ordered all six brigades under his command to prepare for the Operation Tempest, a plan for an all-national uprising against the German forces occupying Poland. In what became known as the Operation Ostra Brahma, the five brigade was to attack the Wilno suburb of Zwerzynik in cooperation with the advancing units of the Third Belarusian Front. However, for fear of being arrested with his units by the NKVD and killed on the spot, Zygmunt Sengilars Lupashko, decided to disobey the orders and instead moved his unit to central Poland. The Operation Ostra Brahma was a success and the city was liberated by Polish soldiers, but the Polish commander was then arrested by the Soviets and the majority of his soldiers were sent to gulags and sites of detention in the Soviet Union. 
It is uncertain why Senjilars was not court-martialed for desertion. It is highly probable that in fact his unit was moved out of the battlefield by Gen. Wilk himself, due to the fact that Lupaska's unit has been long involved in fights with the Soviet partisans and he did not want to provoke the Red Army. Regardless, after crossing into Podlaski and Bialystok area in October, the brigade continued the struggle against withdrawing Germans in the ranks of the Bialystok Home Army area. After the region was overrun by the Soviets, Lupaska's unit remained in the forests and Lupaska decided to wait for the outcome of Russo-Polish talks held by the Polish government in exile. At the same time the unit was reorganized and captured enough equipment to fully arm 600 men with machine guns and machine pistols. After the governments of the United Kingdom and United States broke the pacts with Poland and accepted the Polish Committee of National Liberation as the provisional government of Poland, Lupaszka restarted the hostilities, this time against a new oppressor, in the ranks of Wolnosk i Nizawislask organization. However, after several successful actions against the NKVD units in the area of Białowieża Forest, it became apparent that such actions would result in a total destruction of his unit. During the battles for liberation of Belarus, partisans considered the Fourth Belarusian Front. After the liberation of BSSR, about 180,000 partisans joined the Soviet Army in 1944. During the 1941-1944 period, the turnaround in the Soviet partisan force in Belarus was about 374,000, about 70,000 in urban underground, and about 400,000 in the reserve of the partisan force. Among Soviet partisans in Belarus were people of 45 different ethnic backgrounds and 4,000 foreigners including 3,000 Poles, 400 Czechs and Slovaks, 300 Yugoslavians, etc. Around 65% of Belarusian partisans were local people. As part of the Nazis' effort to combat the enormous Belarusian resistance during World War II, special units of local collaborationists were trained by the SS's Otto Skorzeny to infiltrate the Soviet rear. In 1944-30 Belarusians, known as Korny Kot, Black Cat, and personally led by Mihal Vytuska, were airdropped by the Luftwaffe behind the lines of the Red Army, which had already liberated Belarus during Operation Bagration. They experienced some initial success due to disorganization in the rear of the Red Army, and some other German-trained Belarusian nationalist units also slipped through the Bialowieza forest in 1945. Vytuska managed to escape to the West following the war, along with several other Belarusian Central Rada leaders. Topic. Partisan operations Vasily Korj Raid, Autumn 1941 March 23, 1942 1,000 km raid of a partisan formation in the Minsk and Pinsk Woblast of Belarus. Battle of Bryansk Forests, May 1942. Partisan battle against the Nazi punitive expedition that included five infantry divisions, military police, 120 tanks and aviation. The destruction of the German garrison in Lenin, September 12, 1942. Raid of Cider Kopak, October 26 to November 29, 1942. Raid in Bryansk Forests and Eastern Ukraine. Battle of Bryansk Forests, May to June 1943. Partisan battle in the Bryansk Forests with German punitive expeditions. Operation Rails War, August 3 to September 15, 1943. A major operation of partisan formations against the railroad transportation and communications intended to disrupt the German reinforcements and supplies for the Battle of Kursk and later the Battle of Smolensk. 
It involved concentrated actions by more than 100,000 partisan fighters from Belarus, the Leningrad Oblast, the Kalinin Oblast, the Smolensk Oblast, the Oryol Oblast and Ukraine within an area 1,000 km along the front and 750 km wide. Reportedly, more than 230,000 rails were destroyed, along with many bridges, trains and other railroad infrastructure. The operation seriously incapacitated German logistics and was instrumental in the Soviet victory in Kursk battle. Operation Concerto, September 19 to November 1, 1943. Concerto was a major operation of partisan formations against the railroad communications intended to disrupt the German reinforcements and supplies for the Battle of the Dnieper and on the direction of the Soviet offensive in the Smolensk and Homel directions. Partisans from Belarus, Karelia, the Kalinin Oblast, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and the Crimea participated in the operations. The area of the operation was 900 km along the front excluding Karelia and Crimea and 400 km wide. Despite bad weather that only permitted the airlift of less than a half of the planned supplies, the operation led to a 35-40% decrease in the railroad capacity in the area of operations. This was critical for the success of Soviet military operations in the autumn of 1943. In Belarus alone the partisans claimed the destruction of more than 90,000 rails along with 1,061 trains, 72 railroad bridges and 58 Axis garrisons. According to the Soviet historiography, Axis losses totaled more than 53,000 soldiers. Battle of Polak lapel April 1944 Major battle between Belarusian partisans and German punitive expeditions. Battle of Borisau Begamel, April 22 to May 15, 1944. Major battle between Belarusian partisans and German punitive expeditions. Operation Bagration, June 22 to August 19, 1944. Belarusian partisans took major part in the Operation Bagration. They were often considered the Fifth Front, along with the First Baltic Front, First Belarusian Front, Second Belarusian Front and Third Belarusian Front. Upwards of 300,000 partisans took part in the operation. Pro-independence resistance In 1941, a significant part of the Belarusian pro-independence movement chose to collaborate with the Nazis following mass Soviet repressions in Belarus and discrimination of Belarusians in the Second Polish Republic throughout the preceding decades. However, as the war progressed, parts of the collaboration movement became less loyal to the Germans. By 1942, the Belarusian Independence Party emerged as an underground group uniting members of the Belarusian independence movement aiming to overthrow the Nazi rule. The group started preparing an anti-German uprising in Minsk. Mikhala Abramchik, president of the Belarusian Democratic Republic in exile, has visited Belarus during the war and established contacts with the Belarusian Independence Party but was then by force expelled to Paris by the Nazis where he lived under surveillance by the Gestapo. Germans reacted with repressions. The Catholic priest Vincent Hadliuski, who was the leader of the Belarusian Independence Party, was arrested by the German police on December 24, 1942 and executed in the Mele Trostanese extermination camp. In 1943, Ivan Yermashenka, an influential politician, was arrested amid his growing influence and under suspicion of organizing the assassination of Wilhelm Kube, tortured and expelled from Belarus. Topic. Jewish forces During the same period, Jewish residents of Belarus also took part in partisan activities. The units, based on family camps, was devised by Tuvia Bielski with his brothers in western Belarus. 
Based from the forests near the Neman River, the family units was home to mostly women, children and elderly. The men who were able to carry weapons either guarded the camps or took part in partisan activities. While the main purpose of the camps was to shelter Belarusian Jews and create villages to survive, there were some camps that were set up to militarily combat the occupation government. One group, from 1941 until 1944, attacked or destroyed bridges, factories, railroad tracks and killed police and Nazi officials. The family camps also prevented the deportation of residents to either labor or concentration camps. Topic. Polish forces The Polish underground operated over the whole pre-war territory of Poland, including the Polish territories annexed by the Soviet Union. As non-communist Poles tended to consider the Soviets as occupiers even after the German invasion of the Soviet Union there was some conflict between Polish and Soviet partisans. June 22, 1943, Central Committee of the Belarusian Communist Party received orders in Moscow to destroy Armia Krajowa in Belarus. Since then, the number of conflicts between Soviet and non-communist Polish partisans intensified. One Polish unit was arrested December 1, 1943. Some Polish officers were executed. The commander Major Wakla Pelka transported to Moscow. Topic: Resistance fighters. Topic: Anti-Nazi Topic: Anti-Soviet. Vyacheslav Adamovich. Pavel Trubecki. Mihal Vytuska. Topic: Other. Stanislaw Bulik Balahovich. Eugenio Kalo. Maria Fedetska. Vasily Kononov, Sergius Piasecki, Mose Pijade, Artur Spragas, Zygmunt Sengilars, Pyotr Vershagora. Topic: Resistance units. 19th Infantry Division, Poland. 29th Infantry Division, Poland Anti-Fascist Military Organization Armia Krajowa in Belarus Battaliony Kloski Bielski Partisans Ferinig T Partisaner Organization Lesny National Armed Forces Polish 30th Infantry Division Soviet Partisan Regiment 1941 to 1944 Soviet Partisan United Formation 1941 to 1944 Zare Shera G Uderzenyau Battalion Kadro Topic In Mass Culture The pro-Soviet resistance movement in Belarus was depicted in the Soviet movie Come and See, in many books by writers such as Ailes Adamovich. Topic. See also Anti-fascism Bialowiza Forest Hilfspolizei Lithuanian resistance during World War II Occupation of Belarus by Nazi Germany Resistance during World War II